Good evening, everybody, and welcome. Uh, welcome to the Football Foundation's Grass Pitch webinar, where we'll cover everything from how to access funding through to the renovation work. You'll need to keep your pitches in the best possible condition as grassroots football starts up again. I'm Mark Lydiard. I'm a Facilities Project Manager at the Football Association, and I'll be hosting the webinar this evening. Before I make introductions to the other uh, members of the panel, there are a few housekeeping roles I'd like to make you aware of. This evening, the webinar will be recorded, and by attending, you're giving your consent for the recording to take place. No attendees' images can be seen other than the presenters and the panellists who are on the question and answer panel. Let's move on and make a few introductions. I'm joined this evening by Stuart Lamb, who is a Senior Delivery Manager at the Football Foundation, Chris Smith, who is the Programme Manager at the Football Foundation, and lead for the Grass Pitch Maintenance Fund, which we'll be discussing tonight, and Tom Rowley, who is the Key Account Manager for Football at the Grounds Management Association. Stuart will take us through the main part of the presentation this evening before we head to the question and answer session with Chris and Tom. Before we start the presentation, we're really keen to receive your feedback and questions. So please type them into the chat function and we'll do our best to feed those questions in uh, into the uh, Q&A panel and also uh, answer some of them as they, as they get posed uh, in the chat function. We will aim to deliver, um, we'll aim to answer all of the questions which you raised tonight, but if we cannot fit them into this evening's webinar, then we'll distribute a follow-up question and answer paper for you all via email uh, so that you will be able to get an overview of the questions and the range of questions asked. I will now hand over to Stuart, who will take you through the presentation. Stuart, over to you. Thanks, thanks Mark. Can everyone see that okay? Yeah, we can see the screen, Stuart. So oh, that's, a good, that's, that's a great start then. Um, <laughs> Like Mark said, uh, you know, thank, thanks everyone for giving up their valuable time this evening um, to come and hear about uh, this new, really exciting funding opportunity. Um, as Mark said, my name's Stuart Lamb and I'm Senior Delivery Manager for the Football Foundation covering the South East and East region. So in, in terms of why you're here, um, you, you may well have got an invite from your county FA. Uh, you may have picked something up on social media, but everyone's here tonight is, el is potentially eligible to apply for funding to improve your grass pitches if you meet the criteria. So here's what we want to tell you about today um, in this presentation. I'm gonna talk about the new funding that's available for grass pitches where this funding's coming from, what you can use the funding for, what's required from you and your club, how we'll support you, and at the end, we'll, we'll, we'll go through how you can actually make an application. Um, and then following that, um, there will be a Q&A session with uh, Tom Rowley from the Grounds Management Association and Chris Smith, who leads on the Grass Pitch Funding Programmes for the Football Foundation. So just a bit of background um, in terms of where this funding's coming from. Um, it's coming from the Football Foundation and we are the Premier League, the FA and the government's charity. And we exist to improve grassroots football uh, facilities across England. Um, I'm sure many of you have applied for grants to us before, but we, we provide grant funding, anything from your small grants for portable floodlights, uh, goalposts, all the way through to full-sized uh, 3G pitches. Um, but a key focus for us and, you know, for our funding partners going forward is very much improving grass pitches. Since 2000, we've, we've invested more than £710 million pounds of our partners' funding into more than 17,000 projects. And by improving local faci football facilities, we want to get more people playing football or officiating or coaching in football, irrespective of their background, age or ability. And by unlocking the power of pitches, 
we can help transform the lives of players and strengthen communities. So I'm, I'm sure these next few slides won't be uh, a surprise to, to all of you involved in grassroots football. Um, but in terms of the state of grass pitches today, uh, we've seen a huge impact, um, particularly over the last 10 years with the cuts in local authority funding, and it's led to a decline in the quality of grass pitches across the country. And grassroots football clubs are you know, telling ourselves, county FAs and the FA, that um, the quality of pitches is the biggest issue. And a survey that took place in 2018 concluded that only one in three grassroots pitches are rated as good quality. Only one in eight grassroots clubs are satisfied with the quality of their grass pitches. And in the season preceding that, 150,000 matches were postponed during that season. So what are we going to do about it? Um, I mean, you're here tonight to hear about the, 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 this funding opportunity. Um, we've got you know, a fantastic opportunity with the funding that we get from Premier League, the FA and government um, you know, to, to, to invest into improving and sustaining grass pitches. Um, through the work of the Grounds uh, Management Association, um, there's a new performance standard for monitoring football pitch quality. Um, and I'm sure Tom will go into a bit more detail on that later on. And the ambition is to have 5,000 good pitches by 2024. And the overall aim is to have 20,000 quality grass pitches up and down the country over the next 10 years. So in terms of the funding support that's available, um, we will pr provide grant funding to help you carry out a 10 year maintenance plan to improve your pitches. Um, we will offer a six year grant and the, the grant is determined by the number of grass pitches you maintain or you're responsible for maintaining and also the size of the pitches as well. So you can see there two and a half thousand pounds um, for every one of your 11 side pitches uh, £2,000 for nine aside, and £1,500 for your 5v5 and your 7v7 mini soccer pitches. The grants are available to employ contractors, uh, bring in contractors to provide enhanced maintenance on the pitches. The grants can also be used to purchase materials, and you could also purchase a soil sampler, which you can then use for your future pitch assessments. Separate grants are also available for pitch maintenance equipment and machinery. The maintenance plan uh, will, be, will be very much based on the recommendations in your pitch power assessment report. Um, and some of you may have heard of pitch power, but I'll, I'll go into a little bit more detail on that later on. And the grants are, are there to improve grassroots community pitches. Uh, if you're a club that play within the National League system, National League system steps one to six, um, your first team pitch isn't eligible for funding. However, if on your site you have other grass pitches that you're responsible for maintaining, you may be eligible to apply for the grant for those pitches. And pitches in the uh, regional feeder leagues, previously step seven, may be eligible as long as the predominant use is grassroots community teams. So in, in terms of the aim of the funding, I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty simple really, it's to, it's to improve grass pitches, but also sustain the quality of grass pitches as, as well. Um, I, I touched on briefly earlier, but the, the GMA have created a new standard for grass pitches um, with the aim of a minimum of 20,000 pitches in England up to a good standard. And your pitch power assessment report 
will tell you what level your pitches are currently at. So you'll see from that diagram there, when you do your, uh, pitch, assess your, your pitch assessment through pitch power, um, your pitch will be uh, rated poor, basic, good or advanced. And again, Tom may go into a bit more detail on the, on the standard a little bit later on. In, in terms of what support the grant will help pay for, you will receive the grant to pay for the pitch maintenance contractor to help you improve your pitches with enhanced maintenance work. Um, the plan will be very much determined by the Grounds Management Association via your pitch power assessment report. We will award 67% of the total cost uh, of the enhanced maintenance for the first six years of the maintenance plan. What we will do is we will, we will provide grant of 100% funding for years one and two. We'll then provide a grant 66% of the cost for years three and four, and 33% years five and six. And the eligible work is, includes the following, slitting, fertilizer, selective herbicide treatment, scarification, aeration, and overseeding. If, if you actually carry out the maintenance of the pitches yourself, um, you, you, and you don't need a grant to bring in an external contractor to do the enhanced maintenance, you could receive a grant to support with the cost of materials. And again, those materials would be um, identified through, your, uh, through the GMA, through your pitch power assessment, and you can apply for grants for grass seed and fertilizer. Um, we would condition that, that you need to have qualified personnel to carry out the works. So a, a, a GMA level one or equivalent. So I've, I've talked a lot about what's actually available, but you know, the, one of the main questions we get is, are you eligible to apply for a grant? So the, the, the first eligibility criteria is you need to have the pitch power assessment report. And I'm, I'm, I'm conscious I've talked a lot about this pitch power so far, and we'll, we'll, we will go into it in a li little bit more detail. Secondly, you need to have, uh, you need to be the freeholder of the, the site where your pitches are. You need to, or a 10 year lease or license if you don't have either of those, you, you, you will need a written permission from the landowner. Now, there may be some clubs on, on the webinar tonight that use local authority sites, school sites. So you, you would need to get written permission from the landowner as stating that you are responsible for maintaining those pitches. We do have a pro forma that we can provide to help with this. And you need to have the permission to carry out the work. You can also apply for a separate grant through our small grants for a grant of up to 75% of the total cost of any machinery required to improve your pitches. Now, again, this would need to be determined by regional pitch advisor from the Grounds Management Association. Um, Second-hand machinery is eligible. You can also apply for funding um, to store the machinery. And condition of award would be um, ensuring the machinery and also safely securing it as well. In terms of what can be achieved through this program, a, a pilot was carried out at West Kirby United Football Club and they have 96 teams spread across 11 uh, pitches, um, six sites in the area, and an average uh, pitch maintenance cost of £1,800 per pitch has seen all the pitches go from below the new good standard to above that standard. Um, and it resulted in the number of postponed matches reduced from 24% of matches postponed to 
a couple of seasons ago, um, which, as I'm sure you can all agree, has had a massive impact on that club. In terms of working in partnership, we are very much here to help you in partnership with the GMA identify the right work needed to improve your pitches or your pitch. We are providing new tools to make it easier to manage the process via pitch power, and we will get you started with 100% funding for the first two years paid in advance. What we'll then need from you is you'll need to provide pitch assessments two times a year via the Pitch Power app, and you'll then need to fund the maintenance plan to keep the pitches at good standard from year seven onwards. I've, I've talked quite a lot about Pitch Power, so I'm just gonna cover this in the next couple of slides. Um, it's an app that's been developed um, through much work between the GMA, the FA and the Football Foundation. Um, and it allows you to input pitch information yourself. It reduces the time it takes to receive a pitch assessment report. Uh, previously, Tom um, and his team of uh, regional pitch advisors used to have to come out to each site, uh, do the assessments and then write the reports. Um, but the sheer scale of the number of pitches across the country means that this digital app is, is, a, is a really good solution for that. Um, the app also provides ongoing advice on how to improve your pitch. And it works via a combination of uploading photographs and other information via the app. Um, it's free to uh, download and to use. And there's some really helpful guides on, on the Football Foundation website. And I think the key thing that I'm trying to really get across is that you will, you'll need to use pitch power on any pitch that you want funding for. So I'm just going to show you a, a very short video on how the app looks in practice. Um, there's no fancy music or anything, but hopefully this will um, this will give you a flavour of what the what pitch power can provide. Okay, so once you've once you've carried out your assessment via the Pitch Power app, um, you submit that, and you need to do that before you can receive any funding from us. the The regional pitch advisors from the Grounds Management Association will then review the information that you've submitted and assess the quality of your pitches, and you will receive an assessment report from them within twenty one days of submitting your inspection. The report that you receive uh, will provide practical recommendations on how you can improve the quality of your grass pitches. And those reports are very much the key to getting the funding going forward. And you, you can see an example um, of, a, of an assessment report there. As well as the Pitch Power app, we've we've also got a groundskeeping community app, which is an online free platform that, that helps anyone responsible with maintaining grass pitches, involved in grassroots football, um, to, to tap into some, some, some expert grass pitch knowledge and support at the touch of a button. It's free to join. Um, you can access ongoing advice and education. And there's, there's a really good forum where uh, grounds people are on there with issues they may be facing and guaranteed there's someone else who's gone through the exact same issue. And it's proved a really popular forum. Um, again, Tom and the team of um, regional pitch advisors are, are on that 
platform on a very regular basis and are on hand to provide some real expert advice. And again, there's some, there's, there's some advice on there around uh, renovation and the extension of this current season. Um, and, you know, just in terms of that extension um, going forward and issues with, uh, you know, sites where there's football and cricket on the same site, there's, there, there's all sorts of information on there. And again, I think Tom might touch a little bit on this later on about some of these the early June renovation work. So in, in terms of what's next, um, I just want to sort of run through what you need to do, what steps you need to go through to proceed with an application. So I'm, I'm, I've mentioned it a number of times now, but you need the pitch power assessment report. Um, you need the required security of tenure via freehold, 10-year lease or license, or the landowner permission to carry out the works. You go onto our website and access the Grass Pitch Maintenance Fund section. You need to have your pitch power assessment report ID ready, and I'll show you in a minute where you'll find that. You complete the online application form. Um, the funding is offered on a first come first serve basis. There's no application deadline, um, but we're pretty sure demand's going to be significant for this. So, you know, the, the sooner you can get an application in, the better. Um, if you're applying for less than fifty thousand pounds of funding, you you will get notification within two weeks. If your grant request exceeds 50,000 pounds, it will take up to four weeks to get a decision. decision. Um, you then need to tender and procure the works in terms of um, accessing an, an external contractor to do the maintenance. And then what you'll need to do is provide the pitch power inspections twice a year and also complete your funding claim to the foundation on an annual basis. In terms of accessing the application form, you, you can go onto our website. Um, if you've applied for a grant from us before, it should take you straight in. If you haven't, it will ask you to register with a username and a password. It will only take a couple of minutes. Um, you go to the section that says grants available and you'll see Football Foundation funding and you click on start application process. You then click on the complete the application form uh, link. And the application form is, is, is really straightforward. It won't take long at all. The key thing to remember, when you get your assessment report from the GMA, there will be a report ID number on there. So it's really important to, 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 to remember this and use that ID when you come to submit, complete the application form, because you'll see there, once you tick the grass pitch maintenance fund box, it will ask you to complete your, um, your pitch power assessment ID. That's really important. And that concludes the, uh, the presentation. I'm sure there's quite a lot of questions that have come in. Hi, Stuart. Thank um, you very much. Thanks, thanks very much for that, Stuart, uh, taking us through the presentation. It was very comprehensive. You are right. There are lots of questions which have been coming in on the chat, and um, Chris has been busy answering some of those, those questions. We'll pick up a few of them, uh, if I may, in terms of, of that now. So, Chris and Tom, are you both there? Yep. Yep. Yeah. How are you doing? We've obviously been getting quite a few of the chat. I've got some written down here in terms of kind of questions which have been asked. I know you've been going through uh, providing answers to a lot of the questions asked. Um, one of the things Stuart mentioned in his presentation, Chris, uh, was about an agreement with the landowner uh, that is required if a club doesn't have freehold or a 10-year lease or licence in place. 
Where can I, where can clubs get this agreement from? Yeah, so the agreement's been sent to uh, all county FAs. So if you contact your county FA, they will provide you with a, um, a copy of the agreement for you to um, agree with the landowner, get them to sign it, um, and then uh, upload it as part of your application to the Football Foundation. We will also send out the uh, agreement as part of the, uh, the uh, post webinar comms um, at some point, hopefully uh, next week. The, uh, everyone that's registered for this webinar um, should get a copy through uh, um, them comms as, as well. Yeah, okay. Okay, I think that's a really, really good answer in, in terms of kind of the question in, in terms of that. So we've got a pro forma agreement which is available, uh, but there must be an agreement be, between the, the landowner or the, the, the site owner and, and the club before they can make an application saying that they can carry out additional works. Another question which has come in, Chris, and it's probably a two-part question here. Um, some clubs have already used pitch power and submitted the data. Do they need to do that again? And quite a few questions on the chat have also raised around um, they've previously had the RPA's kind of paper reports before we introduced pitch power. And, you know, can they submit them as part of their application? Okay. Um, to answer the first part of the question, um, if you've used pitch power and you've used it for all the pitches you maintain on your site um, or sites and um, um, and for the pitches that you want funding for, then no, um, you don't have to reuse pitch power. Um, if you haven't done that and um, you've not included all the pitches that you maintain and all the pitches that you want funding for, you will need to submit a pitch power inspection for all those pitches. Um, and once you receive your pitch power assessment report, um, you just need to, as Stuart's been through, um, put the uh, report ID into the application portal and it will prop populate all of the pictures that you've used um, pitch power for. Right. Uh, in, ter in terms of the second part of the question and the previous um, RPA um, reports, no, we, we, we need everybody to use pitch power um, that is wanting to apply for this fund. So pitch power is a prerequisite of the fund. Right, okay. So everybody's got to log on to pitch power. Uh, how do they do that, Chris? It's through the uh, Football Foundation website. So if you look at the uh, chat, um, I did provide a link on there and in the information that will be sent out afterwards um, with the, uh, the rest of the comms, we will provide uh, a link to how you access the, uh, the Pitch Power app. Okay, okay. Um, moving on, um, Tom, this is a question for you on the renovation side. Um, what, what kind of works can be carried out at, at the moment, bearing in mind is we're going to have a season extension to June when football kicks off in a couple of weeks' time. Uh, obviously, that's normally a part where clubs will be towards the end of the season and looking at renovation. Have you got any tips for, for you know, for, for clubs on the, on the webinar tonight in terms of what to do and what to look for? Yeah. Um, cheers, Mark, and uh, evening, everyone. Uh, yeah, as Mark says, obviously, with the extension uh, of the season to the end of June, that obviously um, <clears throat> brings some challenges with a potentially very short turnaround, if any, between one season and the next, but also being combined with it being bang in the middle of summer, where it's usually uh, fairly hot and dry. So it, it will limit some of the work that, that can be done then. So um, as was mentioned on the slide, um, Flexibility is going to be key. That this most operations can still be done, but it's going to um, it's going to require some forward planning and some communications with your clubs and coaches, um, etc. Um, we've got some more detail of this on the Hive. Um, a bit more detailed stuff in, in terms of the flexibility that's required with different operations. So that's at footballfoundation.hivelearning.com. Um, but just to sort of summarise, I guess the um, the biggest challenge is probably going to be with seeding because if you wait until the break at the end of the season it's likely to be too hot and dry um, as most grassroots clubs struggle for, for irrigation um, so it'd be too hot and dry for any seed to germinate um, so, <clears throat> so with that in mind seeding sort of now so late March into April and possibly early May um, and again, or wait until September time, will give a better chance for the seed to take and establish. 
Um, now, there's obviously a, a bit of a risk there that some of the new seed might get kicked out during play. So making sure that uh, the method that's used to sow the seed is appropriate. So disc seeding, drill seeding, anything that sits the, sets the seed in the ground um, a few millimetres deep um, will give the seed the best chance of establishing some rooting um, so it can it can hold a little bit better against any wear, uh, wear or tear. Some particularly bad areas, if you do come to the end of the season, if you've got some really bad areas, gold mouths, et cetera, that have su su significant damage, then you may need to consider turfing. Hopefully, because of uh, the break that we've had over the winter period, actually pitches are going to be, in, hopefully, in a, in a fairly decent condition at the moment. And we're going to be playing most of our games during the growing season where recovery, post-match, um, should be better than it would in the winter, hopefully. Come the end of the season, actually, the, the, the wear won't be as bad as it would do during a normal season. Um, as for other operations, I so say they can they can probably carry on fairly normally, but it's just around. You're going to obviously have to work around fixtures. So fertilising, for example, carry on as normal, applying a controlled release fertiliser in the springtime. Um, timing of application is always key with fertilising. If you don't have means of irrigation, so trying to plan your operations to coincide with rainfall within a day or two of applying the feed. But also thinking about if you've got games coming up, uh, and leaving a few days in between to get the granular in the ground so it isn't lying on the pitch when you've got training or matches. Um, decompaction operations can continue as usual as long as the soil conditions are okay, so essentially not too wet or too dry. If we leave it till the summer, it's likely to be too dry to get anything in the ground. So again, carrying out decompaction operations, deep spiking operations like that in the springtime, perfect time for it. Um, so there's no particular issues there. Um, just trying to think what else I would uh, probably advise against any sort of heavy mechanical scarification because you, you would have to realistically wait until the end of the season and then with such a short turnaround in time between seasons I think it would be it would be too risky in terms of getting the pitches to recover so um, but you can use a springtime rake or a chain harrow just during the next few weeks of the season, which will be just a little bit less aggressive, but will still help to, to get some of the annual meadow grass out and keep the surface um, fairly clean. Um, uh, weed killer, so sort of selective herbicide, again, can really be done as it normally would be done. So spring, summertime, when the grass is actively growing, um, again, we need to be flexible and think about fixtures. And this is where the, the planning and communication with your clubs is is key um typically mowing should not take place three days either side of applying um, a selective herbicide to a weed killer so you obviously need to take that into account when you're trying when you're preparing pitches for fixtures particularly the height in the growing season when the grass is growing like crazy um and also um ideally shouldn't be uh, weed killer shouldn't be applied sort of six to eight weeks prior or after seeding as well. So just keeping those sort of things in mind and that obviously this should always, I'm sure you all know this, but should always be applied by fully qualified person or contractor, et cetera. And then I think just the final thing would be would, is, is sand dressing, top dressing. So again, it can be done. But one thing you need to be careful is how much you are putting on because putting on too much turf on a stuff, too much, sand or top dressing on established turf can be really difficult to work into the surface so you obviously don't want you pitched it like a beach when you've got you've still got matches to play on it so really shouldn't be putting any more than sort of 20 to 30 tons on at a time if you coincide that with your decompaction operations you can work that into the surface it'll go down the holes it'll help aid drainage routing etc but yeah just be careful of how much you do put on because it, it you know we don't obviously don't want to uh don't want to affect play with having too much sand sitting on the surface you could with all these operations you could split them up so you could do a light sort of renovation work now so you're seeding you could you could do half now you could do half again in september same with sand dressing um so i think that's i think that's everything mark that's, that's really kind of comprehensive tom uh, I'll bring you back into a couple of questions that have been raised kind of later on, but I'll, I'll let you take a breath and, uh, and, and I'll move over back over to, to Chris. Chris, just, just one before I go into probably a, a, a more detailed kind of question. 
Um, just in terms of, can you just, just confirm to everybody who can apply? There's been a few questions around parish councils being able to be the applicant, uh, and maybe at a school we need the applicant. Can you just clarify in, in terms of who, who needs to be the applicant? Yeah, so the, the applicant needs to be uh, the grassroots club, um, grassroots league, um, or a regional feed league, um, previously step seven, that has um, grassroots teams that use um, their uh, main pitch. Um, National League system clubs um, aren't eligible for their stadium pitch, but if they have pitches that are outside of their stadium pitch um, and they're used by grassroots um, teams, clubs, etc., then they can apply for those pitches. Um, if um, you are working with uh, the likes of a local authority, parish council, um, please uh, use the, uh, the maintenance agreement that if you don't have a, a lease license or freehold um, and that maintenance agreement will um, be classed as suitable security of tenure against the, uh, the fund when you apply. There is also an option to sign up um, a parish council or a landowner as a joint applicant um, within the application form, so that's a consideration also. Okay, that's pretty much clarified those kind of questions over who can be the applicant, Chris. If, if we just move on, I know Stuart mentioned this presentation, uh, how much funding uh, clubs are going to need to contribute to secure the funding uh, over the six year period and over the, the overall 10 year period agreement. Can you elaborate on that a bit more in terms of, of, of the, how the funding breakdown works? Yep, so the funding is aligned to the uh, pitch power assessment report and the pitch power assessment report will um, provide you with a um, performance quality standard per pitch. Um, depending on that, that um, performance quality standard uh, will determine uh, how much funding is available per pitch. Um, we want to be as supportive as possible. That's why the Football Foundation will provide um, two years worth of 100% grant um, in the first two years. Um, there's also a calculator that has been produced, which county affairs have, um, which can be sent to clubs, leagues, any potential applicant. And within that uh, calculator, you can enter um, the number of pitches um, within your assessment report, pitch power assessment report, um, that fall uh, at good or above, um, or pitches that um, fall um, below good. And the calculator will work out exactly what the Football Foundation contribution will be in each of the years, one to six, uh, and the percentage um, that's required from uh, the club. Okay, thank you very much uh, for that, Chris. Tom, a, a question for you. Uh, one of the uh, one of the one of the attendees on the on the webinar has up said that worm casts are a major problem on their pitches. And um, what can be done to to kind of you know reduce the amount of worms or the amount of worm casts on the on the pitches? What recommendation would you have? Cheers. Yeah, I mean, worm casts are they are a bit of a nightmare, and there's 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 sort of there's no um, there's there's no real sort of quick fix product that, that can be applied. Um, a lot of it is around sort of cultural practices. So um, removing clippings when you're cutting grass, if if possible, because the worms will be coming to the surface to try and for food basically. So keeping debris off the surface of grass clippings, leaves, etc. Regular sort of top dressing or sun dressing over time can improve. Um, <clears throat> so what you want to try and do really is brush regularly, which is so that when you're brushing regularly, it obviously disperse the worm cast, but that can be quite difficult in the winter when the worm casts are wet on heavy soil. So if over time, uh, if you can apply sun dressings, that will just make the, um, the, the soil that's brought to the surface a little bit more friable and you'll be able to break that up easier. Um, Another option which um, I would suggest you work with, if, if, if this is an option you're looking at, I would work with a, um, a fertilizer specialist on this is to slightly alter the pH. So um, just to acidify the soil slightly, we'll put the worms off a little bit. So there's a few things you can look at there, but they are, you know, it is a bit of a challenge across the board, uh, particularly at, grass, at grassroots level is, is, uh, is dealing with 
uh, worm cast. But yeah, cultural methods are the best. Regular brushing, as I say, keeping the surface as, as clean as possible. Um, but yeah, so there's sort of no no real quick fix there, unfortunately. And, and I guess Tom, you know, you'd fully support is is that if an attendee was to sign on to the hive onto our groundskeepers community, that's the kind of question which would normally elicit a good 15, 20 answers from experienced kind of groundskeepers from across the country. Yeah, so we've got on the hive, um, we've got around 2,300 users, I think. Um, and there's, there's, there's kind of two elements to it, really. There's like a community network. So we've got, I, I'd probably say 80, 90% of the people on there are from grassroots backgrounds, either those directly looking after pitches or involved in clubs. And um, we've also got our regional pitch advisor team, which are on there. And basically, the, this, it's a community, so people will come and ask questions. Um, and it's a really open, sort of friendly network. There's no there's no stupid questions at all. Um, you'll always get a response. People share um, share the issues they've had, the successes they've had. And uh, yes, yeah, so it's a really sort of fantastic place to, for that sort of thing. And the other side, the flip side of it is we've got um, sort of a, a big resource library. So we've got lots of, um, we call them cards. So we might have a card on mowing with sort of with um, video footage, decompaction, fertilizing. There's uh, case studies on there. There's interviews with, um, we've recently posted an interview with Carl Stanley from Wembley and Andy Gray from St George's Park. We've we've done some stuff with John Ledridge at Leicester. So there's, um, so yeah, it's a really good resource. So um, if anyone who's not on there, then I'd definitely urge you to, to join it because it's, it's a place where you can get some, uh, some, some really useful tips and uh, advice. And, and just to remind everyone, Tom, how, how do they access, how do they access the, the Hive? Uh, so it's footballfoundation.hivealearning.com and I think Chris put something in the chat earlier with a link and then essentially you just go in and you need to sign up so you, you give your, your, your email address and, and a password and then you just need to um, verify your password and that's it, you, you're in then and you can you can start using it. Okay, that's that's great. I've got a couple more questions for you which I'll, I'll, I'll raise with you, you kind of later. Um, Chris, this is one for, for you really. Uh, a club has, has, has posted on the chat um, what happens if they have more than more than one pitch, uh, more than one pitch on the site? Uh, do they have to do all of the same kind of maintenance practices to those pitches um, you know, to do that for every pitch, or is it variable? Yes, yeah, so it's all determined by the pitch power um, assessment report. So when you submit pitch power for each of the individual pitches, the uh, regional pitch advisors will um, assess them. Uh, as individual pictures and provide a, um, a a recommendation based on each individual pitch. Now, obviously, there will be circumstances where um, all the pictures require uh, the same works, um, but again, there will be differences for each of the pictures. So, yet yeah, it's uh, on an individual pitch basis that the recommendations are made. And, and I mean, that's, that's really useful, Chris, for, for everybody to understand. Uh, just, just moving on in terms of kind of another question. Um, can can clubs apply for their training pitches as well? Um, no, so it's only for um, pitches which are, uh, are pitches used for um, affiliated match play. Okay, that's great. And, and just another question is just kind of raised on the the kind of the Q and A and on the chat around uh, clubs are having some clubs having problems dropping their pitch positions onto the pitch power app. Uh, and they're saying they can't use it. Is there somewhere where they can go to get help? Yeah, if, if um, you're struggling with it, if, it, if it's a technical problem, um, then if you um, email inquiries at footballfoundation.org.uk, um, they can um, signpost your query to um, get technical support. Um, so, yeah, that's probably the best route forward if people are struggling um, with that. And... Again, if there are um, specific circumstances that people are struggling with with pitch power, please uh, use that email as well. Mm -hmm. Am I right? You can do quite a lot of the setup on pitch power from, from when you're at home or connected to the Wi-Fi, can't you, in terms of before you go to site? Yeah, so you can, you can do the whole process end-to-end -end of pitch power um, without Wi-Fi, um, as long as you've got your, your mobile data enabled. Yeah. But the way that... Um, pitch power has been built all of the account creation um, 
the uh, select image organization you're from, uh, which site um, you are um, a link to or responsible for, and then the makeup of your pictures, um, plotting your pictures on, on your site can all be done um, in, in the luxury of your, your armchair, um, so to speak. You will need, though, however, to actually physically go and attend your site and do the pitch inspections for each of the pictures. There's really useful guides on the Football Foundation website, and there's videos, uh, FAQs, um, etc. Um, so yeah, um, hopefully through watching those and um, uh, reading the FAQs, etc., um, that will be useful. And I, I've also just uh, remembered that there is um, a specific email um, address for uh, Pitch Power and those struggling with Pitch Power, which is pitchpower at footballfoundation.org.uk. So if you do have any technical issues, please fire through your queries and, um, and, and challenges through to that email address. Okay, for, for those uh, attendees who are maybe having a couple of problems with pitch power, Chris, are you able to, to post that into the chat? Uh, yep. It will be circulated at the, end of the, uh, at the end of the webinar when we're all going to send you a, a kind of like a pack. Um, Tom, if we can just move on, a question for you. A uh, little bit of discussion on the chat around the pros and cons of using liquid fertilizer versus granular fertilizer. What, what are your views on that? Um, yeah, I mean, liquid fertilizers tend to be more of a, a quick fix and, and, and a quick release. So you'll get an instant um, improvement in color and sort of vigorous growth, which isn't always beneficial, particularly at grassroots for, for volunteers who have limited time to um, to obviously stay on site, get on site. So um, you still need to make sure a liquid feed is watered in because ideally you want to get the nutrients into the into the roots. Um, so what, what can happen with a liquid feed is it's taken up by the leaf of the plant and then you go on with your mowers, you cut the grass and you take all the nutrients away that you've just put on into the grass box. Um, it's personally, for I think for most grass roots, I think granular is the best way to go because it's, it's a better form of slow release fertilizer. Um, you get it into the soil into the, and sort of then directly taken up by the roots. So it's benefiting the whole plant um, rather than just having that sort of quick release, instant flush of grass and growth, which then sort of is over in a, a couple of weeks and then it needs reapplying again. So, so yeah, no, it is an option, but usually I would say it's combined with the granular sort of slow release uh, program. Right, okay, okay. So it sounds like really good advice there for, for clubs and, and for in terms of how to fertilize pitches. And um, Chris, a couple of questions which have come in on the, the chat this evening about uh, kind of drainage and pitch leveling. Uh, can the fund uh, fund you know, those works? And, and what would be our advice to clubs with, with those kind of issues at the moment in terms of that? I presume we'd want them to use pitch power first to see if uh, the advice and guidance given from uh, you know, via pitch power from our regional pitch advisors uh, could give them some hints and tips to, to improve them. Yeah, so um, likes of drainage, levelling, etc., isn't eligible through um, this fund, but the Football Foundation do have a small grant scheme. Um, so the uh, if you are um, considering those types of works, please go on to um, the Football Foundation website. The small grant scheme guidance is on there, um, and uh, you will see the uh, relevant information um, that will apply to you. Yeah, okay, okay. And, and, and just, just, just one question um, I've, I've got here, and I think it will probably be towards you, Chris. Um, a club is saying that they've, they've had an application in with the foundation, which has been pending for the, for the last year, and they've sent a pitch report in, um, but they, they haven't heard anything. I think that's right in terms of from what I'm reading. Um, what would you advise to, to that club? Uh, is sorry, is, is the application for what was the application for? Was it for enhanced cross pitch maintenance? Or yeah, I think their application says it's currently pending. Um, and they've sent in the pitch report uh, earlier last year, uh, from last year, yeah, from last year's grant. So I presume that we would just ask them to to make contact directly with, with yourselves at the foundation just to clarify that situation with that application. Yeah, I think that's probably one for inquiries at 
footballfoundation.org.uk without knowing the specifics of the um of the question of the case yeah okay okay that's that's really good so we've got that on the the chat as well i saw that uh i saw that email address earlier um i've got no more questions for you um if we just leave it 30 seconds has anybody got any further questions they want to put into the chat so that i can pose them to the panel this evening I think we haven't got any further questions. So um, let's let's bring the, the webinar to a close. Uh, if we haven't answered your question, we're going to go back through all the questions you've posed on the chat this evening to make sure that we, that we have answered them. And we'll be sending out to you shortly uh, a Q&A paper, which will give more details uh, around any kind of questions, uh, which you know, so you can read through them and check in terms of it answered. There is a whole host of information on the Football Foundation website with regards to the, the Grass Pitch Maintenance Fund. Um, I'd like to thank Stuart for presenting tonight and for Tom and Chris for providing answers uh, to all those questions uh, you know, which were posed. Um, with, the game far, with the game of football fast approaching, uh, the Football Foundation has launched the Game On campaign with three different funds to get you ready for the big kickoff in the next couple of weeks. The Grass Pitch Maintenance Fund, which we've discussed tonight, is one of those funds. Um, but you might also might be eligible to apply for a return to football fund or a small grant uh, to support your club. More information can be found on the Foundation's website uh, and will be shared with you after the webinar. But you can also just go to a search engine and type into the Football, football Foundation where you'll find all of the information. Just to clarify from tonight, uh, we will send you the following information after, after the webinar. We'll do the quick Q&A paper, as I mentioned earlier, so we can wrap up all of those questions which you've, which you've asked. Um, a recording of this evening's webinar will also be shared with yourselves and also the presentation slides which Stuart took you through earlier on in the evening. Um, we'll also provide you with links and more information how you can get involved in our grass pitch uh, revolution. And I would certainly advise you to uh, become a member of our groundskeepers community on the Hive, where you can get a whole host and wealth of information and advice from your peers across the country. Lastly, can I thank you for your attendance and giving up your time this evening. Hopefully you've found the webinar beneficial and uh, look forward to you submitting your application for funding and accessing the online groundskeeping community to get tips and advice uh, from other volunteer groundskeepers. On behalf of us all tonight, I'd like to thank you for your time and wish you a good evening.